Welcome to the Vet and Create Academy, where we discuss veterinary emergency and critical care and science-based tools for veterinary professionals. Identification of pericardial effusion may be an easy task. However, in some cases, it may be tricky and challenging. It is important to differentiate between pericardial and pleural effusion. Also, you want to note the amount and echogenicity of the effusion. The next most important goal is to decide if pericardial effusion is causing a cardiac tamponade physiology or not. Cardiac tamponade physiology occurs when the pressure within the pericardial sac is higher than pressure within one or more of the cardiac chambers, resulting in impaired diastolic filling of this chamber. Classically, right atrium is compromised first. However, it may be different in patients with heart defects or severe pulmonary hypertension. By the way, you can download the guideline on the acute management of pulmonary embolism in dogs and cats by clicking the link in the description below. It is vital to remember that cardiac tamponade is a clinical diagnosis, meaning that echo may be suggestive of tamponade, but the final diagnosis requires the evaluation of the whole clinical picture. For example, imagine you're presented with a patient in shock who has mild to moderate amount of pericardial effusion. Since you cannot identify any other causes of shock, you decide to perform pericardial synthesis despite its only mild to moderate amount. If this patient's shock resolves after you drain the pericardium, this will allow you to make a diagnosis of cardiac tamponade. It is rare when small amount of pericardial effusion is causing cardiac tamponade. However, it is possible in an acute situation when pericardial sac is stiff and non-compliant. Echocardiographic signs of cardiac tamponade may include diastolic collapse or serpentine deflection of the right atrial wall during diastole when the tricuspid valve is open. As the pericardial pressure continues to rise, the right atrial, left atrial, and right ventricular walls may get collapsed as well. It is common to find a dilated, non-compliant caudal vena cava in patients with cardiac tamponade due to the presence of very high right atrial pressure. This patient has both pleural and pericardial effusions. However, pleural effusion predominates and only a small amount of pericardial effusion is present. To differentiate between the two, it is important to identify the bright echogenic pericardial sac that usually has a circular shape surrounding the heart. This is a right parasternal long axis view of the heart. There is moderate to large amount of pericardial effusion that is surrounded by hyperechoid bright structure representing a pericardial sac. Free right atrial wall is partially collapsed, suggestive of the true cardiac tamponade physiology. This is a very similar image. However, you may appreciate a complete collapse of the atrial wall and partial collapse of the free right ventricular wall consistent with severe cardiac tamponade. There is also pleural effusion present. This is a left apical four chamber view. There is moderate to large amount of pericardial effusion resulting in partial right atrial and right ventricular wall collapse. Any ideas what's going on here? This is a sub xiphoid view. The top of the screen represents a portion of the liver that is separated by a thick hyperechoic bright line, which is the summation of the diaphragm and pericardial sac. Next, there is a thick layer of the hyperechoic pericardial effusion. This patient has a hemopericardium and its pericardial space is occupied by clotted blood. The most common cause of true acute hemopericardium in veterinary medicine is the left atrial rupture in patients with severe mitral valve disease. If you want to learn more, check out our video on blood gas analysis during CPR.